This is going to be another brief update on the laser engraver project. Unfortunately I haven't spent as much time as I'd have liked uh, since the last update, but um, I think I've come to a, kind of, a couple of conclusions at least. I'm, I'm still having accuracy problems and that is resulting in the stepper motors kind of slipping and I'm losing steps and obviously that's not acceptable for this kind of thing because it, it's not, there's no feedback, it can't correct itself. So I've got, um, I'm not quite sure how to solve them. I've tried a few different things and uh, and uh, I'm kind of stuck at this stage. Um, there's one or two ideas I've got to move forwards with but um, it will be another couple of weeks before I can try those because some of those ideas rely on me getting hold of some parts quite cheaply when I'm in China in a week or so. But uh, I'll just run through some of the, uh, at least the problems and the fixes I've attempted uh, for the last week. So when you drive each of these axes um, kind of forwards or backwards, they, they accelerate up to full speed and then they travel along and then they de decelerate at the end. The problem I've had is that during the kind of traversing run in the middle, it, uh, one or both of these will skip steps, so it'll, it'll stall, it won't, doesn't have enough power or torque to, to move the, the carriage along, and it just sits there kind of grinding away, or kind of skipping away. And obviously at, at that stage one of these will then come, come out of alignment and the whole thing will just grind to a halt. The, there are a couple of possibilities for this. Um, the, initially, um, I was kind of looking at kind of stresses and strains on here, so this needs to be as smooth flowing as possible on this axis. And there's the, previously there was a bearing in this end here. So these blocks here had uh, bearings inside. And so uh, the shaft is supported either end with a bearing, and so that was holding it in place. The motor alignment here um, was connected with a coupling, so coupling allowed a little bit of a little bit of leeway but it's not 100% and so that was kind of aligned and obviously this then and its um, kind of anti-backlash nut arrangement underneath was locked and so this unless it was perfectly aligned um, this shaft is, would potentially be put under a lot of stress um, kind of bending from one place to another to another to another and so what I've done is uh, simplified these end brackets here I've basically uh, stripped out the, the bearing and reduced the size they're quite thin it's not needed anyway as it's supported at this end. Um, uh, it didn't really make much of a difference that, but uh, it would, um, in terms of the overall design, it certainly simplifies it slightly. Uh, less plastic, less parts, so it's, it's a good move, that one. I've tried removing bearings from this end, but it doesn't help either, um, which is really irritating because there are, there's nothing left to be grating. There's just the... Um, the kind of anti-backlash nut in here and straight into the motor. But, um, I've tried one thing this evening and that is reducing the travel speed of the motors. I've basically halved the speed at which they move at. Um, but it, at first it seemed really good but I'm still getting a problem. And I'm just going to move the motor back and forwards and hopefully show you that. So this is configured at maximum speed, which I think given the low power nature of the laser is, is adequate. If I go back now... Yeah, I've heard this before, it, it's kind of, it seems quite intermittent. It's around this point here. It's, it's, I don't think it's skipping, or it might be kind of skipping the odd break. It's not as bad as before, but I really don't want to start lowering the speed of this thing anymore. doesn't look like it's going to do it now, but um, I am having the odd kind of um, problem. Now there are, there's potentially a couple of solutions for this. The the motors I'm using here are uh, kind of NEMA 14 motors. They're much smaller and lower powered than motors I've, I used on the previous kind of linear rail projects or even the 3D printer I've got uses. So switching those up for higher power to kind of NEMA 17, which is fairly standard size, would potentially solve this. Um, so if it is kind of getting stiff, they'd have the power just to force their way through, which I think is probably a sensible move. Um, alternatively, I redesigned this entirely. Instead of going for these uh, shafts here, I'll just go back to um, typical kind of belt arrangement. Um, 
so that's my current thinking at the moment. If I, uh, I don't think I, I don't think I can solve it using the current hardware setup. Um, I'm slightly concerned that some of this is due to the fact that these motors are hooked up in parallel. They both run to the same motor controller. Um, so if one starts to experience problems, it might have an impact on the other, or perhaps the kind of current being supplied to both motors isn't even, which is why one's lower powered and slips. I don't. I'm not really sure. I'm hoping it's not that. I'm going on. I'm going to carry on with the assumption that that's not the problem. Um, so I think the the plan of action now. I'm going to get hold of a pick up a couple of NEMA 17 motors while I'm over in China, and do a quick switch of those and see how it performs. Um, if it still doesn't work, I will redesign this arrangement for a belt going back and forwards. And I think that it's, uh, it's going to be at least kind of two, three weeks, I think, until I kind of move ahead with this. At least that is until I come up with, unless I come up with any other kind of bright idea to try this with. On the uh, on the laser side of things, I'm, I don't know if this was how recent ago this was, comparison to the last update, but I blew both laser diodes I had previously. I thought the constant current driver um, was capable of running from the same 12 volt power supply. The motors do, but it, none of them were, um, so they're dead. I've uh, got a replacement for one of them, and I've also got um, uh, kind of an infrared laser diode, which is uh, it's got a much higher kind of wattage rating. I'm not sure how that will translate into um, kind of burning power. Potentially, it's going to be higher because there's less uh, irradiated light to kind of cut down. But obviously it makes focusing it uh, particularly difficult because I can't see the beam. But um, that is something I will investigate at a later stage. So for now, um, this project is on hold for a little bit. While I'm uh, kind of making this update, I'm just going to quickly talk about one of the other changes I made. And it's the kind of a redesign of some of these plastic parts. This is an attempt to improve the alignment. I discovered that the... I believe I think it was the motor bracket was uh, 0.5 mil out in terms of the height. Uh, at some stage during the redesigns, I had made a mistake and had corrected that. Um, but I thought at the same time I'd take a look at some other things just to try and get it flat. So the height of the shaft, I decided was one of point. It was one of the things I wanted to make um, kind of absolute. So the height, so the shaft height would always be a fixed point above the ground. But uh, this presents some problems with my 3D printer because uh, it's, as I mentioned before, it does kind of bulge out a little bit and it's not perfect. And so the original brackets here, they were, so the brackets kind of printed this way around. So it prints going up like that. And so this surface here is perfect. And so you kind of know that the alignment or the spacing between all of these is 100%. But here, it kind of bulges out a little bit. And if this is going to sit flat against the surface, like it is here, I can't guarantee the spacing from there to there. It's, um, if I set it, say, to 20 mil, it's probably going to be 20 mil and a bit. Um, I've got no way of getting around that. I did try and uh, take a look at feasibility of sanding one of these parts down just on a belt sander but it's a nightmare and there's no way that can be a feasible part of the build um, so I kind of took a look at another option um, the the motor brackets uh, around this side here this is slightly older version but it's printed uh, kind of it was printed on the ground upwards so moving like that and so the the height of the, the motor shaft coming out from the base to there um, was perfect. It, um, because there's, there's no kind of bulging involved, it is sat flush against the ground and the hole is then where it needed to be. And so matching up a part here printed in such a way that uh, the height of this shaft to the ground is going to be slightly over with one that's going to be um, perfect. And so I redesigned the bracket and to kind of be printed the same way. So this, and this was also to fix another problem actually, because it was printed from the ground up, the mounting of the motor to the plastic wasn't perfectly flush because of imperfections in the edge of here. Mounting this motor to the side meant some of that might mean it was kind of crooked or off at an angle. 
And so what I've done is reads on the bracket, it prints from this way onwards, you can see the lines in there. And so that means it's got a perfect flush fit between the motor and the bracket, which is better. And obviously printed this way around, it means I'm out vertically, but theoretically, the problem, or the kind of the error should be roughly the same. So they're, maybe they're, they're intended to be say 20 mil out and they'll both be 20 mil in a bit. And so hopefully it will kind of correct. This is one of the, the original styles, original brackets. I had to print it from the ground up, moving upwards here. And obviously I said the motor sits flush in here, uh, pushed against the side. And this is, is not a smooth, clean surface. So that was gonna be out. Um, and so that uh, was one of the kind of early revisions. Then it moved on to this one here. And you can see the, I'm not sure how that green will come out. So yeah, you can see the problems on the edge here. This is because it was really, really thin at that point. And so I made it a little bit thicker, which improves the result that side. And also trying out a, a nice new purple, which is a new color I picked up from Verbidashery. That's uh, it's kind of working quite well. Then I, so I came up with the idea for switching it around. So that was an early prototype. Um, as it's printing kind of, um, from this way up, I needed the, I'm not sure how clear this is gonna be, one of these pieces. And so the motor is designed to sit flush against here. And so that's flush against there. And which would mean that this recess here was on the wrong side. And so that would be like a millimeter above the ground. It would just collapse onto itself. So I've had to do away with that and do a full hole all the way through. And then increase thickness just to improve rigidity. And it was a nice part. Uh, it worked well and it mounted down, but obviously being only held at two points here, it's kind of rocked a little bit. And so, the one I've kind of settled on here is just a slight change in that. It's just extended out and add an additional kind of third mounting point in the back. And so that was a uh, kind of a fun evening, kind of redesigning those parts there. In the end, all these uh, these three green parts here, this was printed on a uh, on a kind of a couple of meters that Faberdashery threw in on my latest order, which is really nice. And the quality of the plastic and prints came out. Uh, really well, so um, I think if I if it does turn out that I'm going to stick with this kind of design, I'm going to redesign both these parts very slightly so they kind of sit and interlock a little bit better. But um, other than that, I'm very pleased with the um, this kind of redesign and this updated uh, mounting piece here.